Thank you for giving us the opportunity uh, to talk about the situation in the occupied uh, territory of Western Sahara and to explain more about like um, what's going on in there. We belong to one of the richest country uh, of the world. Um, the people, um, the indigenous people in this uh, part of the world are minority uh, compared to the Moroccan occupation and the settlers and the military and the, the police that we have in this territory. And also uh, we uh, are living under a total media blockade and military blockade. So when we talk about like uh, Western Sahara, the part that is controlled by that is controlled by the Moroccan occupation. We talk uh, about an isolated territory that is controlled by force by Morocco, um, the government that doesn't allow anyone from outside, any acti activists, any uh, media outlet to get into the region uh, to see the reality and to meet the people in there and to take their uh, stories. And of course, uh, if there is an occupation, there is a tragedy and there is a suffering. Uh, so uh, um, as my colleague uh, mentioned, I'm a part of our Keep Media, is a group of media activists that fight to document the Moroccan violations of human rights in Africa's last colony, Western Sahara. And um, as I told you, no, journal no journalists are allowed uh, entry and the only images that find uh, their way out of the territory are the ones Equip Media managed uh, to film. So uh, there are now six journalists who, uh, some of them were working with us, uh, were member uh, at Equip Media. They are now behind bars, uh, sentencing to very, very tough uh, sentences. Um, between 20 years uh, the, in the prison, 25 years, and to life sentenced to the prison. The minimum sentence is um, 10 years. So there are six now uh, prisoners and we are not the only one who talks about this situation and the, uh, about, about them, but there are so many human rights organizations that uh, talk about their cases and their circumstances that they are living under inside the Moroccan uh, jails. And uh, as you know, there is uh, one of the um, famous organizations that work on journalists' uh, cases called the Reporters Without Borders. They announced uh, their report in 2019, and they described Western Sahara as a black hole to explain the situation of the journalism in there and how the people uh, suffer in silence. So, of course, we believe that um, the main reason of the the like this our tragedy is that we pay the price that we belong uh, the um, to the western sahara that has a lot of natural resources and there is no doubt that the question of natural resources of western sahara such as fish oil and phosphate has been the main reason for the interest in the area in uh, question um, and, you know, as uh, in so many places all over uh, the globe, the exploitation of the natural resources, including the job opportunities it creates for the occupiers, may, like mixed states and people react selfishly and fortunately um, in these places. So we when when Morocco talking about like um, the natural resources, they see, they all the time mention that the, the population are benefiting from these natural resources, which is completely wrong. Uh, because when we explain this word population, who is living in there? Um, we are presenting only 10% in uh, Western Sahara as indigenous people, and the rest are the military, the police, and the settlers. For example, in Layoun, the capital, which is the biggest city in Western Sahara, they are Regarding the Moroccan statistics, there are about 300,000 people, but the Sahrawis are minority and the rest are the Moroccan settlers. So the population is just a word that is used by Morocco to manipulate and by the European Union that also is getting involved and strengthening the occupation by um, like signing these kind of agreements and stealing our natural resources. And of course, we see the European Court of Justice uh, in uh, all its resolutions since 2016, 
uh, talking and confirm that Western Sahara is not part of Morocco and Morocco has no right to, to get fish from our uh, sea and our country. But unfortunately, unfortunately um, nobody respecting this and Morocco still and continue um, like fishing in, in Western Sahara uh, together with its uh, companies from European Union. So we thought we're trying to uh, get the information, but I, will, I want also to explain to you that the Sahrawi people are not allowed to work in this kind of companies that is owned already by foreigners. And all of the people are working in these companies are Moroccan settlers. So they know that the Sahrawi will take like uh, some important information and will share it with the um, the people outside who are working on this, like in this battle, which is very important. And unfortunately, since 1975 or before, when Spain uh, uh, like colonized the, the, the country, the territory, and after that, Morocco, it's been decades that they both, Spain, European uh, uni countries, and also Morocco are exploiting the natural resources. When we talk about the, the battle of like the 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 economy and the natural resources in there, it started just a few years uh, ago, not not so many years. So they had all these decades uh, their like freedom to take all the natural resources and to of course marginalize the indigenous people and leave the people in the refugee camps living under the um, international uh, aid. Uh, unfortunately, uh, like while their country is uh, is uh, like um, very rich and it's just uh, this riches taken by um, the occupiers. Now we, we 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 know and we understand that we are not occupied by only Morocco but also by uh, Europe. So. Um, one of the main work also that we do as Equip Media um, is helping um, some like um, press agencies who are based in, for example, in Spain and doing some filed researches uh, with also organizations. And I want to give an example that we did with um, a channel called, uh, La, called La Sexta, La Sexta in Spain in, uh, in a program called Equipo de Investigación. So this uh, channel sent uh, a group of um, investigators to the territory and uh, they spent four days in Dakhla, so, uh, moving from a house to another house. Of course, it's not easy to get into the region because it's forbidden. So if anyone wants to, to visit, he has to say or she has to say that we're going for tourism. And then we find as a local a, a local journalist, we find our way to bring them secretly into the region. And this is what we did with uh, with this group that came from uh, La Sexta. So they enter, they get into Dakhla and they spend four days moving from a house to another house, trying to meet people and hearing uh, their stories. And then when we decided to go out to go to to like um to go to one of the small village of uh, fisher fishery, um that is there in Dakhla, uh we decided to go and uh, unfortunately when we just reach the people that we want to meet to talk about who who are like they are only settlers that fishing in there. They uh, the the police came and surrounded. Um, us and they arrested us but the investigation uh, with the, the stories they take and the images we, we managed like to to catch the investigation impacts a lot in the um, in Spain uh, so many people watching that and it was talking about the, the illegal exploitation and the exploitation of the octaves of Western Sahara and how they lied to the community in Spain uh, that this uh, octopus is from Morocco and it's um, uh, all are from uh, Western Sahara. There is also phosphate, and we know that Western Sahara has uh, the um, the like um, the good quality of phosphate uh, uh, in uh, in Bukra in Fosbukra. Uh, there is a, a legal exploitation and uh, the latest investigation from Western Sahara Resource Works says that Morocco sell about 
400 million euro of phosphate to India just a few months ago. So the question that asks itself, who is benefiting from all this? The Sahrawi people, Morocco now are, are marginalizing people, facilitating the illegal immigration, open so many windows to the people, the Sahrawi people, to just leave the country. Now, if you go in the streets, in the Sahrawi like uh, streets in the cities, you only meet the police and the Moroccan settlers. So all the Sahrawis now crossing the sea to Spain, to Gran Canaria, and we lost so many young people in the sea of, because they floated, unfortunately, or they escaped to other like um, other way, which is uh, Bra Brazil, to Guyana now, and France, yeah, like France accepted them as a, a refugees. And uh, we see this is just uh, a dirty game that is like playing by Morocco together with this country that trying to um, to evacuate people and to like just um, control by settlers, the millions, like thousands of Moroccan settlers control the territory together with the military and nobody now there like defending um, uh, the rights of people in self-determination. And of course, the rest of young people are also in jail because we, we have now about 60 uh, Sahrawi prisoners in, in uh, Moroccan uh, jails, sentenced between 20 years to life uh, imprisonment, unfortunately. And mm -hmm. at the end, uh, the local activists mm -hmm. and the uh, journalists Dos, dos minutos para concluir. Perdona, voy a ser un poco estricto con el tiempo porque tenemos okay, a muchos... Gracias. So we, I want to, I want to call everyone who care about humanity that we really need to protect local activists. You mentioned about like Gaza, who is now reporting in there, lo the local journalists and activists, because they are the first targeted by the occupiers. So the Sahrawis uh, journalists are really need the pro uh, protection and also uh, the the civilians in there because the Polisario now restored the war and the situation getting worse. Um, again, uh, Morocco is bringing all the time uh, militaries and uh, more police, more settlers from uh, Morocco to Western Sahara. And we're still uh, waiting like for uh, for international community to intervene to solve this. Uh, problems that and difficulties that we um, live in. Thank you.